Now that we know what a limit is, let's talk about how we find limits. For this, we have a three-step process. Step one, plug in your x value. If that doesn't work, move on to step two, algebra gymnastics. And if that doesn't work, move on to step three, vertical asymptote analysis. In this video, we're gonna talk about step number one, plug it in. And we'll talk about why this works. So here we go. Let's consider a function x squared minus six x plus seven. And let's take the limit as x approaches two. Now when we ask for the limit as x approaches 2, we're really asking for both the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side and the positive side. So here's the negative side of x equals 2. So as we approach 2 from the negative side, we're approaching what looks like negative 1. And as we approach 2 from the positive side, we are also approaching what looks like negative 1. Now remember, the limit only exists if both the left-hand limit is equal to the right-hand limit. So if they're both approaching the same number, the limit exists. Now you might look at this parabola and say, but doesn't the limit exist everywhere then? Because for all of these points on the parabola, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And that's absolutely true. For this particular example, a parabola, x exists for all reals. The domain here is all reals. Now if the function exists and if the limit is equal to the function value, well there's something else that goes along with that that we'll talk about later which is continuity. But what's important here is that you note that we are taking the limit from the left hand side of, of, of positive 2 and from the right hand side of positive 2 and we seem to be approaching the same value right here. The question is, how do we take that limit? Step one, plug it in. What does that mean? We're gonna take two, which is what x is approaching, and we're going to literally plug it in. Two squared is four, negative six times two is negative 12, four minus 12 is negative eight, plus seven, is negative 1. And so lo and behold, the limit is approaching negative 1 on the graph, and when you plug it in, you get negative 1. The reason is because, well, this is continuous here, and we'll talk about that a bit later. Let's take a look at another example. Let's take the limit as theta approaches pi of cosine of theta. Well, cosine theta, there's nothing going on here that will give us any trouble whatsoever. We're not dividing by zero. We're not doing anything irregular. So let's just try to plug in pi. What's cosine of pi? Well, negative one. And the answer here is negative one. And so for the first step of taking limits, for the love of all that is holy, try plugging it in. If you can, you're done. It's as easy as that.